during this time on lockdown in order to help you find love is you doing a SWOT analysis on yourself, right? That's your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then you're gonna do a social circle report. And that's where you get to call family and friends and find out their input and their intake on why they think that you're single. Why do they think that you are standing in the way of love? Maybe they don't, maybe they do, but you don't know. And then I'm even gonna recommend from my homegirl, Shan Boondra, calling your exes. This would be a great time to hit up your exes and find out from them what you did that was either awful, amazing, great, replay again for the next relationship, but you get to actually pick and choose and do some self-reflection. So now you have all of the results and I want you to compare them. Is your self-perception accurate or not? Were you right about what you thought about your answer about why you're single in 2020? Once you have that, you now will have expanded and increased your self-awareness if you decide to actually regulate your emotions and thoughts and behaviors around it. I see tip number two on how you are going to get a boo or love during coronavirus is you're gonna actually have to reach out to people who you ghosted in the past because chances are you either were too hard on someone, you overlooked some things, maybe you were distracted by somebody else because you know we get caught up and someone eventually becomes our backup plan until the person that we really wanted is available. That doesn't work out and then we have to learn our lesson and move on to the next person. Well, in this particular situation, you're gonna hit up the person that you social distance, AKA ghosted. <laughs> and actually take the time to get to know them. You have nothing but time on your hands. So maybe you're calling them back, sending them a text, how are you doing? A great intro for that is, hey, I know everybody's afraid right now with coronavirus. I just wanted to actually reach out to you and let you know that you were in my thoughts and I care about you. I may not have done a great job of expressing that in the past, but would you be open to rekindling this friendship? We can start there if that makes you feel. What are your hobbies? What things excite you? What you're gonna do is join a Facebook group and go through the actual people who are on there and see if anyone is in there that you're attracted to. Fellas, you may actually have to Join some yoga groups, some things that maybe women are interested in. Maybe you join a Facebook group for pets and now you're connecting with someone in there that has similar interests as you. Ladies, please do not only join groups with other women. I know that that makes you feel more comfortable, but we want you to meet some fellas. And so you're gonna have to join some of these groups. Introduce yourself, hi everyone, I'm here during this uh, social distancing time, but doesn't mean I wanna be antisocial and present yourself nice, friendly, and introduce yourself to the group. And then you're gonna scout while you're on there as well. And then you send someone a side message and tell them that you appreciated their contribution to the group or you're interested in getting to know them more. Are they open to it? Spicy tip number four, how to find love during coronavirus. All of those apps that you swore off, that you hate, that you don't ever have any luck in, you're gonna actually download those. And I'm gonna give you some help on what to do with the apps in just a little bit. But first, we're gonna get some insight knowledge on why, 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 why do people hate online dating so much, Shelly? Something about meeting people organically just resonates more with me. And I know you've done episodes on that in the past and been like, you know, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> like you're not like, you know, you prefer the, you know, you have to put yourself out there. I understand that your dating profile is kind of like your dating resume. Mm -hmm. So I get all Good that. Job. She's been listening. She's been listening. I've been listening, you know, and I'm, I'm getting my life spiced right now. But I'm putting my sister through the spicy life program. putting me through the program. So I understand and I'm learning and I think I'm warming up to that idea a bit more. But something about meeting people organically kind of just resonates more with me. I'm also naturally introverted. I know you've done something about that <laughs> as well. So the idea of having to list all of my really great qualities or like kind of create small talk doesn't always resonate with me, but I think I'm getting better at it. And so I'd be more open to it. But ideally, you know, ideally you want your perfect partner to like fall in your lap, right? Like that's like, that would be my... <laughs> That's ideally, ideal. Ideally, I would like to walk down the street and be like, oh, I've been looking for you. You know, like <laughs> you've been looking for me too. Cool. Like we're a thing now. But, you know, I know things don't happen that way. But ideally, yeah, I just like in the times when I actually do have the courage or do have the the motivation to go out. I think ideally those are the best spaces for me to meet people because it's like you're out. You actually get to engage with people. I feel like there's a lot of things that happen in the experience that happen like sentiently I don't know the word but like you know touch like you're able to flirt in a yeah. different way and be like oh there's the other cues like social you're cues. able to use your there's senses other, yeah other senses and I'm a sensory person like I like to do things like that like I want to smell you I want to like feel you out I want to feel your energy things like that and I know that for me those things don't always translate on the apps 
But that being said, I do think that texting and like talking on the phone, those are other communication skills that need to be developed. So I'm warming up to the idea of the app. But so Shelly brought up some really good points. She thinks that she nails it or lands it and has a better success rate when it comes to being in person because she gets to exercise her five senses. She gets to use those as determining factors of whether she's interested in you. And then she also probably, which most people feel, thinks that they perform better, that they bring their best foot forward mm -hmm. and that people will receive them better when they're in person. For some people, the dating apps actually are more beneficial because in person, they're maybe a little bit more nervous or afraid to go up to people or they wouldn't speak to them or now they're able to connect with someone who they wouldn't have had access to prior. So it gives them a little bit more courage because they don't have to bring their best foot forward and try to impress someone initially in communication. But what, once again, this always stems back to is communication, communication, communication. Does who you're presenting online, your true authentic self, translate when it comes to dating apps? Well, I'm gonna do a whole nother episode <laughs> on making sure that you present and that you communicate more effectively when it comes to being in these apps in this dating world. But I wanna encourage you guys to take this time to just practice using the tools right now because there is a ton of people who are inside of these apps right at this very moment. They have no way else to meet other people. And so there's an influx right now of people who are online and you may now increase your chances by meeting someone who may not have been on there prior because of social distancing. To my sister's point about exercising your five senses, because that is something that is important. That is what social engagement, social interaction in person gives us because you get to exercise your five senses, smell, sight, uh, touch, taste, and hearing you get to engage in a different way that you don't necessarily get to when it comes to online dating and the apps. And so because you can't use the same even openings that you would when it comes to the apps, it makes you a little bit nervous, right? We get, we get choked up when it comes to what do we say? How do we approach this person? Uh, you know, are they gonna misread or misinterpret what my messaging is? And so I have some amazing spice breakers and I might post them to the Spicy Life website or do a whole session uh, for those for you guys. But I don't want you to be discouraged about that. What you do need to do is have some like go-to hit points that you can touch on when it comes to things that you say that are witty and clever online. Because how are you gonna make yourself stand out from everybody else? And so if it's, oh, I don't know what to say, that's what I get you know stuck at. I'm gonna post something shortly about that um, on my IG. But if you are getting stuck, Okay, what would you want someone to say to you in order to get to know you? Remember back in the day, we used to write letters, we used to have pen pals. Well, that's kind of what you're creating right now, right? You're sharing with someone and you're getting intimate some things about you, but some great openings are about your five senses, right? Why don't you tell someone that they look like they smell good? Why don't you tell someone that you, you know, find what they have on in one of their photos, you know, attractive or beautiful, or you think that they are, you know, striking. Why don't you tell someone how you really feel? <laughs> Why don't you tell someone that they, you know, uh, what are the other senses that I was saying? I said, I already gave you one for uh, sight and smell. So then touch. Okay. So maybe you want to ask someone, uh, do they prefer massages or hugs? Right. Cause that would, that would be touch. So you want to ask questions around their five senses. What's their favorite food? That's something that you can ask them about what they would like to taste. So now you know where you wanna take them when it comes to being able to actually go out and engage and when one of these restaurants finally open up. And then the last one is hearing. You wanna ask, can I get you on the phone? I wanna hear your voice. You sound like, you, you, you write like you would have a sexy voice. That's another tip right there when it comes to the five senses. And so I just gave you all of the five senses of how you can communicate virtually on those five senses and you're addressing and using your imagination and now painting a picture for them. And I would wanna to get to know that person who was you know, talking to me about something that we may not be able to feel right then and there, but now you're describing what it would feel like to be with you, what it would smell like to be with you, what you know uh, you find attractive about us, what you would like to do. And then that's when you can get into hobbies and the things that you're passionate about. But those five senses right there, uh, shout out to my sister Shelly for talking about the five senses, because I think sometimes we forget or we can't 
articulate what it is exactly makes the online versus in-person engagement experience different. So I wanna encourage you guys right there. The spicy life. Spicy tip for how to find love during coronavirus and lockdown <laughs> is, drum roll please, a photo shoot. So while you may have a cool profile and I'm telling you guys to get back online and start dating and taking advantage of this time, setting up some dates for when lockdown is over, your profile may not represent you to the best of your ability. If you haven't had maybe some help or maybe you're not the best at writing or maybe you don't know what makes you the most incredible person, let's talk about those things. Let's describe those things. This is your time to brag when it comes to your profile and describe yourself as someone who somebody would want to date. Are you able to attract what you're attracted to? The different photos that you wanna have are a fitness photo, show that you're physically active. You wanna show that you uh, do have a jobby job, so show a professional photo. You wanna show the everyday, you know, girl next door, guy next door look, how you look on a casual day, maybe for Netflix and chill. And then you also wanna show what you look like during date night. So something glammed up looking fabulous. So maybe you are in a tux, maybe you are you know, in a button up fellas and ladies, maybe you're in a glam dress, but you wanna be able to envision uh, you know, what a date would look like with the person that you're swiping on. So we wanna see you in different scenarios. So we know, okay, I can bring them on the red carpet if I want to or a nice dinner, but I can also chill with them at the house and they're adorable in each one. So you wanna give a variety of those looks. And if you don't have anybody to take photos of you, this is a great time to learn how to use your iPhone or your Android and <laughs> put, put it somewhere in the house. Make sure you have some good lighting and start clip clipping away, all right? And if you're really bold and you aren't afraid to go outside, do it in your backyard or do it in the hallway, but try to choose different locations. And there you guys have it. You've just been spiced. The spicy life. Number six, how to find love during Corona virus. I know that sounds crazy, but some of you guys are on lockdown. So this is the one that you've been waiting for. It may seem like it's the obvious explanatory, but a lot of you guys are not doing this enough is Instagram. I'm not saying you're gonna slide through somebody's DM right away. What you're gonna do first is find someone quality who you're interested in, or at least who they present themselves to be, and you're interested in that person. And you're going to like one of their photos. Then you're gonna like three of their photos another day. Then you're gonna comment on one of their photos and say something nice and engaging with them. Compliment, of course. And then hopefully they engage back. If they don't, in a couple days, you're gonna send a follow. You're gonna actually follow, fine, let's when you get to follow. And then after that, you're gonna slide through the DM. And then you're gonna let them know that you've enjoyed the content that they've been providing and you're interested in getting to know them more. Is there more than meets the eye? And if they're interested in getting to know you, you know, you're open to a new friendship, a friendship so that it's not threatening, but let them know that you find them attracted and that you'd like to maybe, you know, talk to them or eventually spend some time after getting to know each other better. But give them your number if you really wanna be forward or ask for theirs in return, but start to engage and build that rapport and eventually take it just like you would on the dating apps to your cell phone and maybe a phone call and then FaceTime if you really wanna get a little crazy. But it doesn't have to be as scary as we think that it is. And I know you're thinking, oh no, what about the rejection? Well, what about it? It is a part of the dating process. No risks, no rewards. And so you're gonna to have to put yourself out there and you have nothing but time right now. So if the first one doesn't work out, look, we go until five, 10, 20. <laughs> chances increase and you're going to at least get one of those responses back and potentially have a date as soon as lockdown is over. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. A spicy life.